So this issue of uh, anthropogenic global climate change, uh, anthropogenic global warming, uh, is really attracts a lot of interesting viewpoints. Um, I would have to say, I mean, this is the, I want to state my stance on it, first of all. Uh, I, I've been commenting a lot lately on a Mystical Forest's recent video um, and kind of got into a little bit of a discussion with Jay Merman. I'll talk about that in just a second here. Uh, but one of the, um, the the things with that issue that it, it seems to attract, kind of like the creations, creationist deal, very similar, or the um, uh, anti or feminist anti-pornography um, arguments, is that it seems to attract a lot of really, really one viewpoint kind of people, and I think that's that's unfortunate um, because it would be a topic for a great discussion. In fact, I've actually spoken with people who don't really believe in anthropogenic global warming, or at least they don't put much significance in the concept, but who know both sides of the issue, and they're they're very fun to talk to. They actually bring up some interesting points. Um, I'm not talking about them. I'm not even going to talk about that issue. I'm talking about people who know. A small collection of facts, typically unreferenced, that they use over and over and over again, and refuse to even look at the other side. And I think that's sad because I read both sides of. If, if I'm going to argue an issue, I want to be familiar with both sides of it. I mean, I think it's important to be both sides of it. If I, I debate and support evolution, um, I also know the uh, creationist viewpoint. I read every single piece of literature that comes out on it because I, I want to know, you know, who knows? Maybe the next thing I read from them could change my mind. I have to accept that that's a possibility. Um, but on this issue, we get a lot of people. And I, just, now I'm going to go to this discussion I had, and this, this is interesting. Uh, Jay Merman challenged me because I talked about finding facts. Look at facts, not media spin. He said, show me these facts. Um, and I took it to mean, well, that's, you know, I thought, it was an invitation to say, like, you know, you know, hey, could you give me a couple links to some things that might, you know, I provided four papers. Now, from reading other comments that this person had made, um, I kind of knew what they weren't looking for. So I went through a bunch of literature, a bunch of citations, and I chose citations. I didn't choose, like, the best ones. I chose ones that specifically had no scientists involved that were from East Anglia University, for, or University of East Anglia, for example. Um, because, I, you know, immediately those scientists in this person's mind have no, all of them have no credibility. Um, so I picked, I, I picked those scientists specifically. I tried to pick articles that were specifically support man-made climate change, but weren't necessarily from the climatology work. So one of the, one of the sources was a marine biology article um, on corals. That so you know to sort of you know that way these people aren't probably aren't directly getting funding from any climate sources they're getting funding from other places and things like that so I provided these three four sources and I was immediately attacked on them because their their sources were cited by IPCC people or their sources were you know whatever none of them are any good they're not even going to read the sources um, because they're all immediately flawed and I was thinking about it today like you know a suitable analogy. And I thought this is a good one, and I think this this is actually pretty close to dead on. Let's just say I pick somebody, okay? Oh, let's say Mystical Forest. I'm I'm not picking on you in this video. I'm just saying I'm picking you, and I challenge you, and I say, hey, Nick, I want you to prove to me that the Bible is the literal, irrefutable word of God. Absolutely, prove prove to me the Bible is true, okay? All right, prove to me. Show me references that prove the Bible is true. But you can't, because in the past, like the Paluxy footprints, Christians have actually lied to support the Bible. You have to prove it to me, but you can't use any sources that believe in God. Well, go in with that, that are Christians. And that believe that the Bible is the, is, is the uh, irrefutable word of God. So you have to find me, you have to find me sources that are atheistic and don't believe in the Bible at all but also prove that the Bible is the irrefutable word of God. That's what, you, that's what I'm challenging you to find me. Now you'd see immediately it's like that's a ridiculous ridiculous quest, right? It's stupid. Um, 
Likewise, I'm being challenged to find proof of man-made global warming using primary literature, but not, those scientists cannot be even marginally connected to anything with e University of East Anglia, the IPCC, or any actual climatology gr groups. They can't be connected to any of that. So, so there has to be scientists working independent of any kind of funding. Furthermore, they can't be scientists working under or with government funding from any country that supports the IPCC. So I have to find these scientists out there Furthermore, they have to be scientists that don't believe in man-made global warming because if you believe in it, they're obviously biased. You're obviously uh, pushing an agenda, so therefore your opinion is immediately thrown out. So I'm challenged to find these sources. Um, and guess what? I couldn't do it. Oh, no's. Um, but it's a ridiculous thing to ask. And anyway, so I, I, I comment on this, and I, I thought it was a polite exchange. Um, and then... Jay Merman posted on my my channel profile, our channel page, one a comment with one word, moron. Isn't that brilliant? The intellect just spews forth from that, isn't it? I had I wasn't rude to him. I wasn't in any way condescending or nasty. I provided what he I thought he wanted. I thought, oh, this maybe this would be an opportunity for a fruitful discussion with somebody who may know the issue. And it wasn't. It was from another, here's my new word, wait for it, Nicktard, from another Nicktard out there who already knows what they know. They already have their mind made up. Glenn Beck told them what to think or somebody else told them what to think and no evidence is going to enter in. They're not even going to consider it. They can immediately, no matter how many sources you show, all of those sources, well, that's a biased source. Well, that source is corrupt, whatever. So they won't even have to look at it. They won't even have to look at the other side. Must be very, very comfortable living your life only seeing one side of an issue, never even considering the possibility that you could be wrong. But hey, if that's what you want, I'm not going to tell anybody else how to live. So if that's what you want, that's what you, you know. I don't know. I hope you're happy with that. I hope you're happy in the life you've chosen. Don't quote Dickens in my apartment.